we've got this interesting thing, right? Story, which has been really interesting to see this kind of play out in real time. So it seems like everyone's getting their kind of panties in a twist because Drake is for some reason deciding to wear loads of old school vintage skateboarding brands, you know, lesser known brands that you probably won't be that aware of and basically bringing them back to the forefront by wearing hoodies, t-shirts and whatnot. Right. And uh, the, uh, the idea around it is that he's supposedly hired a new stylist, um, somebody that's UK based who kind of has that aesthetic, who's maybe more tapped into a lot more, you know, um, niche brands who's got this finger on a pulse, knows kind of what he's doing and wants to kind of stir the pot a little bit and is selecting or pulling and getting a hold of these really cool iconic uh you know labels and brands you've got here birdhouse um hoodie and allowing drake to wear them and of course this is kind of sending everybody in the tizzy because no one's kind of thought of drake as being a skater and he's wearing some actual core real kind of you know skate rap brands that only heads would actually know about especially nowadays with the prevalence of these new sort of like merch skateboarding brands to see somebody actually pull it back from the archive and getting stuff that's you know 30 40 plus years old is pretty impressive to see and of course everyone's getting their nose and you know um bent out of shape because drake's not the coolest guy in the world he might make amazing music but in terms of cool factor he doesn't really exude it that much i think his label and how they move as a team do right everything they do is really well done there's a real high taste level in the ovo merch in the ovo radio in the covers they do for their albums and singles and the videos quality is really good but in terms of him as a person he doesn't really strike you as somebody that's cool right so i get why people are a little bit you know uh bent out of shape about the whole issue but the snobbery is quite annoying if i'm kind of, if i'm being honest it's really annoying especially for somebody who skate i uh, started skating when i was like 15 15 14 years old at that time in the ends where i was from there went a lot of black kids skating um at that time in ends coming from where i'm from there went a lot of black kids like me that were going to skate shops in the center of london in south london in the first place so you were getting completely vibed out in some of these stores they were treating you like complete shit and then eventually, you know, when the scene kind of became a little bit more, uh, a little bit more youthful, they started to have a lot more younger people in the store and it started to become a little bit easier to shop there. But I remember times going to Slam City Skates and being treated like absolute dog turd, right? And again, I wasn't because I was being rude or anything. I've always been pretty well respected, well, well managed when it comes to being in stores. But it's just a, com it's just a standard kind of rite of passage when you go to a skate store because they want to vibe you out and make sure that you're here for the right reasons, all that sort of malarkey, right? Then a few years later, a little brand called palace skateboards comes along with you know a whole host of skaters who are basically cosplaying or larping as working class right and then they have this weird dalliance of um, fashion and they become the sort of it boys of the london sea they're gallivanting all around the world with fashion models posing in front of vogue and for some reason everyone's okay with it because everyone on the team is legit right they're proper skaters but no one had anything to say about these guys it's like i said who you know middle class background people who are basically wearing the attire and putting on iconography items or whatever it may be called and sending out signals as if they were from the ends as if they came from struggle as if they came from the mud when in fact they were from you know the shiny towers of flipping Notting Hill or wherever it may be right it's just completely divorced from any of that sort of stuff so that was okay that made complete sense but then when Drake decides to pause to some of these brands and wear some of these, uh, these these old school brands people have got a problem with it now that could be because oh I guess you know he doesn't skate that's why people have got an issue with it. But then again, I, I, I kind of fight back against that and say to myself, does everybody, have, does everybody remember what happened to Pharrell when he got involved in skateboarding? This might have been BBC Ice Cream Team this might have been teriyaki boys thing i'm not too sure which one it was but there was something that caused the streetwear scene to get in a tizzy in the kind of early 2000s maybe 2005 2006 and people got went absolutely nuts at, at kind of um pharrell positioning himself in the skateboarding crew because i think this was just after he did the whole like bmx with the handlebar mustache and he tried to transition into the nrd hats and the diamond earrings and the independent t-shirts and the baggy blue jeans and the dunks and stuff and he kind of was sending out signals like he was about the skateboarding life and then of course a lot of people like oh this guy doesn't skate which led to this funny thing from the archives pharrell doesn't skate do you remember this t-shirt do you remember this t-shirt from plain gravy back in the day that was popularized by bobby hundreds bobby hundreds actually led the campaigner behind getting pharrell kind of cancelled because he felt like he wasn't a legit skater and he didn't represent the skateboarding industry blah blah blah, blah malarkey right and in fact if you think about it really you really do the maths and you really look at the kind of timeline and the scale and how things are basically changing culture you would maybe argue outside of the actual legends in skateboarding that have actually affected the prevalence of black people and brown people and people basically the non-conventional skateboarding 
footballers who are non-white from getting involved in it you would be far pressed to find anybody who has had a bigger influence on getting kids on skateboards who doesn't actually skate than pharrell it might have been the main influence outside of of course the actual legends like stevie williams or whatnot right he was maybe one of the main people that actually got people on skateboards even though he didn't actually legitimately skate himself and i remember this t-shirt being such a big deal that pharrell had to film some weird video where he was like dropping in on a in a bowl or something Do you remember that it was a really crappy video of him dropping in he looked horrible on it he looked like he'd been the first time he'd been on a board terrible terrible shit right and then again during that time people were basically re what are they thinking people were like reinventing their histories and telling people that they started skating earlier than they actually did it was a very bizarre world to live in during that time very very interesting and again like i said the person that actually led this campaign was bobby hundreds right somebody that goes out of his way to pretend he's everybody's friend but behind the scene he's actually a bit catty isn't it like this is and again i love the guy he's a legend i love him i got a lot of time for the guy but if i'm not mistaken he had a lot of bad things to say about F F virgil and here he is of course championing virgil and what he's doing for streetwear and all that malarkey but he had a lot of things to say about him as well so you know the the hypocrisy kind of sits on both sides in that regard so i don't really i've never really understood this whole thing i really haven't and uh, why everyone's getting in a tizzy about drake kind of wearing these skateboarding brands and then there's this really interesting interview here from back in the day also um featuring um who are they interviewing here from the for skate team Blah blah blah, Reba Ice Skate, blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. They interview somebody from the Pharrell Skate Team and they ask them about the Pharrell Can't Skate Team, right? And it kind of puts into effect how, you know, how flipping flimsy and uh, lacking in spine some of these people are in the scene who talk a lot of shit, especially when they have opposing views of what they actually say and do. So the interviewer says the following How did you guys react to the Pharrell Can't Skate t shirt that Plain Gravy made back then, right? It's a t shirt that I featured here, right? And they say the following. We really didn't talk about it. Here and there, people would jump out and defend him. It was so corny looking back at it now. But Bobby Hundred had posted something on his MySpace and I had to message him. It was a picture of the original ice cream ad and it had something on the vein of like Pharrell can't skate. Yeah, I remember that. He did this little Photoshop where he basically put Pharrell can't skate on it, right? It was so horrendous. I remember um, hitting Bobby and saying something super ridiculous like, yo, corny. I remember going to Bobby's store for the first time with Nick Tershe, of course, from Diamond Supply. And Bobby was like, fuck, you're bringing Jimmy over here. And and then I met him and he was the nicest guy. I couldn't even be a bully. Topher Chin had made the shirts and now me and him are friends and talk about having kids. So it's obviously pretty cool. I guess Topher Chin might be the dude that's actually done Blaine Gravy. But the sort of uh, gatekeeping that people are doing within skateboarding is really annoying when you consider how badly some of these people actually treat black people in general in the scene. That's what I'm saying because I've come up and I've known how difficult it was for me to get accepted with certain people because of the way I looked, because of where I came from, because I was actually about this life and from ends and not pretending and LARPing around some of these palace wankers, right? So they're gatekeeping with something that, sh again, you shouldn't be gatekeeping with, especially when you consider these brands are some, some of them are defunct, some of them are, you know, dead in the water, um, some of them basically need a resuscitation. And if the biggest artist in the world at the moment can put shine a bit of light on them and get the prices up on resuscitation sites and make people's dead collections somehow worthwhile so they can put their kids through school who are you to blame who are you to point fingers at especially when you consider brands like nike that everyone's jacking off are actually the actual main culprits of some of the problems that are affecting some of our established core streetwear stores out there by strong arming them into carrying massive amounts of shoes so they can get limited edition shoes that can bring kids to the store so they can then buy decks and how do which you're not going to buy because most sneakerheads just going to buy the shoe to flip them they're not actually going to be fans that are going to stay long term and start buying a shoe but you know skateboarding shops hope that that's going to happen because i'd imagine the traffic in a skateboard store day to day isn't the greatest but if you get some Someone like a drake who can maybe wear a couple of birdhouse t-shirts and an independent trucker hat that might actually help to bring some level of life back to some of these brands to some of these stores that are maybe on the dying edge of it especially when they're not the new hipstery brands like polar and stuff right and they're a little bit more catering towards the maybe the older clientele or the kids that kind of know and get it opening up to a bigger market is actually a good thing it actually does well instead of kind of acting like you know these clicky um you know self self-absorbed palace dude who are kind of pretending as if they got this like weird boys club thing going around wearing sovereign rings like they're from ends and Reebok and stuff it's just all wanky do you know what I mean that's actually causing more damage than anything do you know what I mean that's actually causing more segregation this whole like um um hierarchy thing this oh we're better than you thing it's just all all, all retarded so I actually seeing Drake wear this sort of stuff is actually cool 
in some way, shape or form, but it's also super cringy somebody that clearly doesn't know the first thing of what to do when he gets on a skateboard. So I'm conflicted about where I stand with this. But again, like I said, the hypocrisy is running thick in the scene right now when it comes to this sort of stuff. It's running thick.